in a situation last night where it was hard to get out of the uh, Coliseum uh, and precautionary measures were taken, do you ever get frightened, you know, when, when kids come over to the car like that? Uh, no, we weren't in the car, you know. That's, we never get near enough to, uh, to getting killed to, to be frightened, you know. There's enough police around and enough people around all the time. Is this the first time you used an ambulance as a, a decoy in trying to get out of the co a, a Coliseum? Yeah. It is? Mm. Did you find that uh, a, a sort of a caper? Did you enjoy it, you know, coming over like yeah, that? Yeah, it was good, you know, because we all had the laugh in the back of the ambulance. There was about, oh, I think it was about seven seamen in the sailors, you know, they were all screaming and laughing. Well, what was the purpose so, uh, of the sailor? Just, I think it was just to hide our heads, you know, because... Um, Nobody sort of knew we were in the ambulance, I don't think, in the end. What's the most interesting <coughs> uh, kind of decoy you used in trying to get out of a place, Paul? That was probably one of them, actually, the ambulance. Um, actually, the story goes that we dressed up as policemen once. It's not really true, because all we did was we put policemen's hats on and posed for a photograph. But everybody thought we dressed up as policemen. So, you know, we just played along with it. It's, it's easier to go along with than deny, you yeah. know. I think that last night the um, the ambulance thing was pretty different, you yeah. When did the jelly beans business start? Oh, it's about six months after we started. It started because of a magazine, in, um, uh, an article in a, in a pop magazine, whereby... John had been sent some jelly babies, we call them jelly babies, because the ones in England are very soft and they're shaped like little babies, you see. And he'd been sent some of them and he was eating them or something, and I forget what he was, but the magazine sort of made it up a bit and said, uh, and then George pinched some of John's, and John said, don't pinch mine, and it got a, you know, it was a bit, bit of a soft article anyway. And so in the end, people kept sending them in to George, saying, well, you won't have to take John's now, George, and then send some more to John, saying, well, here's, these will make up for the ones George pinched. And he just got ridiculous in the end, you know, got millions every day. Then these people started throwing them. Today, we started here in America, mm -hmm. the uh, Democratic National Convention. Good luck. Uh, <laughs> in Atlantic City, of course, they're having their battles. But one of the, the real questions today, <coughs> entertainment versus politics is should an entertainer be involved in the political spectrum of this country what do you think as far as yourself and if you were in america or yourself mm. as in <clears throat> politics in england well it depends on the entertainer you know the only reason why we never get involved in politics is because we don't know anything about it i mean uh, you know probably if we knew and were interested in politics then we, we'd probably take sides, you know, but we just don't happen to know a lot about the policies of uh, the parties in England, and we know even less about them here. I just know that I don't like the look of Goldwater, you know, and, and the things he says, but, uh, I mean, you know, it doesn't mean he's no good, you know, it's just I personally don't see, I'm not very keen on Goldwater at the moment, but, I mean, I still don't know what his policies are in the, in the full. I've just heard him say one or two things which are a bit uh, risque, you know. Do you find that the uh, general uh, viewpoint of, mm. of England? Yeah, it is actually because um, it's probably because most of the things that we get over there, like um, interviews and TV, film and things, that he's saying is sensational things like, you know, the, um, the bit about moderation is not a virtue. And extremism is a virtue. No, extremism's no vice, the cause of liberty. Well, that's a bit soft anyway, you know, I think. And he should never have said that. And that's the sort of thing that gets back to England. That's the sort of thing that makes people... Um, I think he's generally disliked in England. Getting into another vein, uh, out of all the uh, possibilities for your entertainment, uh, which do you like best, television, uh, in person like you're doing now? No, the main, the main point about the whole thing is that um, we like each, each of the things, each of the different media in a different way, 
And so it's best when we can do a, a tour like this, then we can go back and do some TV, and we can do radio now, and do a film after that. Because that's the big point about it, the variety. You know, as long as we keep getting changes, then it all seems fresh. If we were stuck on TV for a year or so, or stuck in films for a couple of years, we'd be, we'd be right Back to the, the eye. With the, uh, the Jelly Babies once again, uh, yeah. when we were talked with you last in Las Vegas, you mentioned the streamers. Would you like a pop magazine or print an article like they did about the Jelly Babies and try and make a push for streamers here in the United States for the rest of the tour? Yeah, you know, that's a good idea because the thing is um, you can't, you can't, it's impossible to buy a streamer as heavy as a jelly bean, I think. And, you know, have you ever been smacked by a couple of hundred jelly beans? But, um, yeah, it looks good too, streamers. Actually, people used to do it in Australia quite a bit. They got the atmosphere going great because it was like, just like going to a carnival, you know, and thousands of streamers all over the place. And, uh, that, it was it was really great, you know, because the concerts used to move along like a bomb. That's now the radio station's going to do something about that, too. Right? Yeah, why not, kid? Paul, uh, your picture uh, was very funny, I thought so. And uh, do you ever plan to include this comedy as part of your act? Actually, we used to do a lot more sort of, well, no, not really comedy, but we used to do a lot of talking and a lot more stuff, you know, than we do in the act now, because we can't do as much now. Is, um, we can't be heard, you know, for one thing. And it, it tends to slow it down if everyone's going wild and screaming and things and we start talking and telling jokes. It slows the whole thing down, you know, so we don't bother as much now. But in the, in the earlier days when we were doing tours, we used to have to sort of build the whole thing r really like yeah, the, the, the accepted kind of act, you know, where we'd have to do jokes and things and John would have to you know, sort of play the whole thing up. In your act right now, there are special places where you, with your guitar, make a gesture toward Ringo, and he, in turn, makes a gesture with his hair. Mm. Is this all planned at a time? No, actually, all those sort of things. The, we keep them in, if, if we ever think of them, but they all start off just because, um, you know, I, I think I know the bit you're talking about. There's just one bit where Ringo and I sort of play the same thing, you know, and uh, I normally sort of turn around and <laughs> it's a bit mad, I suppose, but I don't know, you know, it just sort of swings more like that. Well, in San Francisco, in one of the uh, local newspapers there, right after you fellas arrived, mm. uh, there was one article that, uh, I think on the headlines now, but uh, why are the Beatles successful was the essence of the article. I guess every expert in our country, every psychologist is trying to come up with the answer of what it is that the Beatles have that make these teenagers react as they do. Uh, they've used status group uh, process, a sex symbol, etc., etc. Do you have any idea what it is you have? No, well, you know, um, been asked this millions of times, of course, because everybody wants to know. And I, I don't think there'll ever be a psychiatrist or psychoanalyst or whatever they are who will be able to work it out just by saying it's one thing and by putting his finger on one thing. Because, you know, if, if it was one thing, then we'd know it. In connection with movies, uh, do you plan a film this year or next year? Yeah, in February. Is it going to be along the same lines, comedy and excitement, or what? Music? Well, I'm, I think it'll be a comedy, you know, because we could, I don't think we could do anything else. We couldn't go sort of straight and do a tragedy or anything. And we enjoy doing comedies. Uh, so I'm sure it'll probably be the same th kind of thing. But I know the whole... We, we all want to make it different, you know, including the director and the producer and things, and everybody connected with it. Us especially want to make it different from the last. So there will be changes made. There's going to be some changes made, boys. You met Cassius Clay in February. Yeah. What do you think of professional boxing? There's been a lot of criticism of it. There's a lot of criticism of it. Yeah. Um, I don't mind it myself. It's, I don't know, you know, it's one of these things that there's so many people talk about. I, w I watch fights, you know, and some of them I enjoy, some of them are just boring. Um, I like big fights, like the Liston and Clay fights, because there's a lot of publicity about them, and there's a lot of showmanship in them, you know, and everybody gets excited about what's going to happen. Um, generally speaking, you know, I'd probably turn a boxing match off 
if there was something else to watch on a, on a TV. Um, but, you know, there's nothing... Uh, I haven't got anything against it on principle. There was a, uh, a, a recent uh, study in the East at a dragway in New England where the uh, state police took American cars, the big Detroit cars, and smashed them up against the small ones. And they got out of this particular test the fact that small cars are unsafe compared to the larger cars. Mm. Of course, they never crashed a small car with a small car, which is the big ones with the little ones. And of course, over in England, you have uh, all the small ones, and supposedly this is supposed to be more dangerous. Mm. The uh, opinion on uh, the way the state police uh, carried on uh, their test up there in New England and tried to downgrade these foreign imports in the English cars, yeah. especially. Yeah, but uh, well, it, it hasn't worked, does it? Because, I mean, let's face it, Volkswagen are doing ridiculous business in the States with cars, and so are English cars, you know, and the, the only reason I think it's, you know, uh, possible is because they're good cars. I think British cars are about the best in the world, really. You know, when you get to the real class cars, in fact, Aston Martin are great cars, Jaguar are great cars. I mean, they, they don't have to be the best, but they are great cars anyway. Rolls-Royce, you know, proved themselves, didn't they? And the, the, the little VWs, uh, yeah, it's probably just propaganda anyway, you know, trying to, trying to stop the import. The accent in America is on the youthful figure, and especially as a performer on stage, you must be certainly concerned about your appearance and your physique. Do you fellas have any kind of special exercises that you go through to keep those uh, trim figures? Trim figures? Mm, no. Uh, I always hated exercise. I, I never liked sports much. Very lazy, nasty type of person I am. You know, just the type at school who doesn't like going in for the football matches. Terrible kind. Very unsocial. Sociable. <laughs> but uh, no, definitely. You know, I just don't like exercises at all. They, they get on my nerves. So we just sort of sit round. Actually, we get enough exercise on stage, you know, but uh, we never consciously try and do anything to keep in trim or anything because I don't, it's not worth it you know we're too lazy probably it's a terrible terrible attitude to take but it's true i understand you have a liking for yachting and the sea is this uh, no, is this true no, no definitely not oh no can't stand boats we just went on a holiday but uh, with on boats but uh, i can't stand it i get seasick you know don't like it at all I like swimming in water skiing and things like that but uh not too keen on that up and down of the boat, you know. You travel the world on your tours and uh, on Oops. your concerts. Where are you going to go on holiday next year? I don't know. Is there any particular place that yeah, you've seen on your tour that you'd like to go back and enjoy as a respite? No, but do you think I'd tell you about it? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't, would I? No. Um, I've seen lots of places I'd like to go back to. It would probably be impractical to go back to them. But uh, there's a lot of places around, you know, great places, but I still wouldn't tell you. <laughs> no well, offense. Uh, when you look back at the start of uh, your career and everything, uh, and uh, you realize that uh, it was at, at uh, one time a hard grind, uh, do you, how do you feel about it? Do you uh, uh, thank the lucky stars or... Uh, uh, what, what type of feeling do you get now that you've, you've been successful and you, you've achieved the satisfaction you want, apparently, at a show business? Uh, this looking back thing is funny because, um, you know, whatever you look back on, there's always, you always remember all the good things about it, never remember the bad things. Like holidays, like school days. You know, I mean, I think of school days now and sort of thing. They were great, you know. I don't remember having a good time, but I remember when I was at school, I didn't like them at all, you know. And uh, some holidays I've been on, I remember thinking now, oh, they were, those were marvellous times. But you forget about all the insects biting you and all the terrible times, you know. It's the same with uh, work now, you know. When we look back on the days in Hamburg when we used to, you know, we used to have to work very hard, about seven hours a night sometime. And we think, you know, they were great now. But they probably weren't. In fact, I remember at the time they were pretty rough, you know. So oh, thank you very much. Not at all, fellas, not at all.